أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسم صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تصلوا عن أشياء إن تبدأ لكم تسؤكم وإن تصلوا عنها هنا ينزل القرآن تبدأ لكم أف الله عنها والله غفور حليم Oh, you who believe, because these are the finishing touches to the legal system of Islam. Hence, these advices. Oh, you who believe, don't ask about those things that if they are disclosed to you, you will feel annoyed. Don't ask such questions. By intasalu, and if you will ask. Hina yunazarul Quran, when Quran is being sent down, tubda lakum, it will be disclosed. Af Allahu anha. Allah has left over them, left them over as a concession. Conceded them something, I will explain. Wallahu ghafurun haleem, and Allah is forgiving and forbearing. What does it mean? We find in a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared something absolutely clearly haram. And something on the other side absolutely clearly halal. Permissible, forbidden. In between there is a very wide field of mushtabihat. So many things are not mentioned. And one, one you know, at some times he, he is at loss to, to say whether this thing belongs to this group or that group. Now, if you will ask, when Quran is being sent down, Allah will declare it. So this field of muba will become short. You will have more burden, more limitations on your shoulders. Don't think Allah has left them over due to some forgetfulness. In these are the words in hadith. Don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, had some... He just forgot to mention those things. He has not mentioned those things as a mercy to you. If it is declared haram and you commit it, you are a culprit. If it has not been haram, declared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you can plead. Oh Allah, it was not declared haram. I never found it anywhere in the Quran, in the Hadith, that this is haram. So whatever is not haram, is mubah, permissible. Although there might not be any positive proof of its being halal. The principle of jurisprudence in Islam is that everything is mubah unless proved otherwise. Unless it is proved it is haram. Not that everything is haram unless it is proved to be halal. That would have, you know, very much diminished the field of mubahat. But this is the principle, which is absolutely in the opposite. Such questions were asked by the people who were before you. And then they lost their faith due to it. They increased their burden. What about this? What about this? What about this? And you know, an incident happened. When Hajj was made compulsory and imperative, Ayah was revealed in Surah Al Imran. The Muslim stood up, O oh, Prophet, is it imperative, it is obligatory every year? The Prophet Sassam turned his face to the other, he doesn't, doesn't reply. He comes to that side, because he was, you know, a very knowledgeable person, he wanted to have all the knowledge. He said, what about every year? Again, the Prophet kept quiet. Then he repeated the question for the third time. 
The Prophet ﷺ became angry and he said, If I say yes, it will become obligatory upon you forever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, has left something, you know. So why do you want to increase your burden? By asking these questions. This was the habit, you know, of the Jews. And then, you know, one can very easily add to his burden, but to carry the burden is something else. Theoretically, you can add it to it. Add to the lists of duties and duties and duties and duties and obligations and everything first, first. But to perform all these things and fulfill all these obligations is not an easy job. Then you fail. مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ بَحِيرَةٍ وَلَا صَائِبَةٍ وَلَا وَصِيرَةٍ وَلَا حَامِنَ Now I can't go into detail. These are the four types of animals which used to be devoted to their idols and, you know, some she-camel had given birth to so many camels. Now she is set free. Nobody would touch her. So in the same way, you know, Saiba, Ham, Bahira, from some, you know, he-camel, you know, so many you know, she-camels were fertilized. Now, now he is free to roam about. Just as in India, in Bharat we find, you know, sand, they roam about, you know, and nobody can touch them. All these things, you know, they were the customs of the Jahiliyyah. Ma ja'ala Allah, Allah has not declared, not appointed, Najir Bahira, nor Saiba, nor Wasila, nor Ham. Walakin al-ladhina kafaru yaftaroon ala Allah al-Kazim. Actually, these peoples who, who, who don't have any faith, they have concocted and they have attributed these things to Allah. Waqsarahum la yaqilun, and most of them, they don't use their intellects. And when it is said to them, oh, come to Allah. But Allah has sent down and come to His Prophet. He will tell you what is halal, what is haram. You don't make conjectures yourself. They say, no, sufficient is for us what we have found our forefathers to be doing. We don't need any, any new sharia. We don't need any new commandments. Our forefathers were not fools. They were committing, they were doing like this, they were doing like this. So we, it's sufficient for us. Will they take to this attitude even though their fathers might have been knowing nothing? They might have been ignorant. And they might not have been able to have the true guidance. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مَنْ فُسَكُمْ لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ مَنْ ظَلَّ إِذَا اَحْتَدَيْتُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا فَيُنَبِّعُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ O you who believe, upon you is the responsibility only of your own souls. Nobody will be able to do you any harm when you are on the right path. It is very important. I don't have any control except on myself. Even the Prophet couldn't have what he wanted. He wanted Abu Talib to say and utter these words of Shahada, Ashadu Allah, Ilaha illallah, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. But even his wish was not accomplished. You don't have any power. But you have power on your own self. So you are responsible basically for your own self. Ya yuladin amanu alaykum an fusakum. La yadurrukum an dalla. Whosoever goes astray, he is not going to do you any harm. Izah tadaytum when you are on the guided path. Ilallahi marjaukum jamia. To Allah is your the return of all of you. Fayunabbeukum bima kuntum ta'abaloon. Then he will tell you inform you fully of what you had been doing. But this ayah was misinterpreted by people even in the days so early as the days of the Caliphate of Hazrat Abu Bakr ta'ala. They misinterpreted how? There is no need of the da'wah, there is no need of tabligh, there is no need of trying to convince people when you are responsible for your own self. This doesn't mean that. That is your obligation. You have to perform. But even if you have 
conveyed the message in the best of the ways, cleared it absolutely. You have not left any stone unturned on your behalf. Now, even if then he is not coming to the right path, you are not responsible. But if you are not doing, you know, your job, you will be responsible. It was your duty. So, you know, Hazrat Abu Bakr, once he addressed the congregation, that I, I feel and I am seeing that some of you, O Muslims, they are misinterpreting the saya. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't make dawa and you should, you should try to, you know, reform people and to uh, enjoin them to whatever is good and to forbid them from whatever is wrong. This is, this is imperative. This is obligatory. This is your duty. You have to do. If you have done your duty, even then if somebody is not coming to the right path, okay, you will not be responsible on the day of judgment. Even if he is your own son. But if you have not tried to bring him up in the correct way, Islamically, then you are responsible. So then he narrated upon him a hadith, Hazrat Abu Bakr read out a hadith to the, to the congregation, when people are seeing a thing forbidden and do not try to eradicate it, it is well nigh that Allah may punish all of them. Something wrong is being done. I see it with my own eyes. I don't say it. It is wrong. Please don't do it. Then if the punishment comes, I will also be included in the in those who are punished. Ya ayyuhu ladhina amanu shahadatu bainukum iza ahadar ahadakum ul-mawtu hinu al-wasiyyat isnan iza wa'adli minkum. Oh, you who believe, the testimony between you, when death comes to any one of you, and he is making a bequest, a wasiya, it is isnan iza wa'adli minkum. Two just equitable people, persons from amongst you, Muslims. The person is dying, he wants to make a wasiyah, he wants to make a bequest. So he should call two people, two people who can be depended upon, mature people, just people of good character, dependable character, and make them the witness that this is my wasiyah. أو آخرين أو آخران من غيركم إن أنتم ضربت في الأرض فصابتكم مصيبة الموت. And if you are traveling in the earth, in the land, and that you know incident of death comes to you, then you can take witnesses from other people also. If you find can't find any Muslims over there, what to do? You are on traveling. So other non-Muslim can also be made. آخرانِ من دونِكم من غيركم إن أنتم ضربتم في الأرض فأصابتكم مصيبة الموت تحبسونهما من بعد الصلاة Now these two witnesses they should be stopped they should be retained in the mosque after the prayer فيخسمانِ بالله إن ارتبتم and then they should swear by Allah سبحانه وتعالى if you have any doubts if you doubt the integrity of those witnesses now make them swear in the mosque after the prayer. La nashtari bahi samanan. We will never purchase, we will never barter away this request for any price. Laukana za qurba. Maybe the beneficiary is is some my relative related to me. Wala naktumu shahadat Allah. And we will not conceal or hide the witness of Allah. This shahada is shahadat Allah. Inna idhal lamin al asimin. If we do it, we will be among the sinners. Fain rosira ala annahu mustahakta. But if it is discovered that they have, they have become guilty of sin. Fain rosira ala annahu mustahakta isman. Fa akharani yakumane makamahum. And now two other people should stand in that in their place at that very moment in the mosque. Now they should testify. مِنَ الَّذِينَ اسْتَحَقَّ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَوْلِيَانِ And they should be nearest to the king, to, to the person who died. فَيُقْسِمَانِ بِاللَّهِ They will also swear with Allah, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَشَهَادَتُنَا أَحَقُّ مِنْ شَهَادَتِهِمَا Our witnessing, our testimony is more correct than the testimony of these two people. وَمَا عَتَلَيْنَا 
and we have not transgressed. Inna idal lamin al-zalimin. If we do it, then we are the transgressors. We are the evil doers. That we, we shall, you know, we shall be punishable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zalika adna ayyatu bi shaharat ala wajheha. This is more clear or more likely that those people, the original two, they will now bring forth the testimony in the original form. Had it been that whatever you say, it will be accepted. Then you, they might have been tempted to say something wrong. But if they know that their oath can be abrogated by the oath of two other persons also, then they will be cautious. They won't say anything wrong. Just possible that our oath will be abrogated due to other oaths. But taqullah wasma'u and have taqwa of Allah and listen. And what does it mean? Listen and obey. Wallahu la yahdil qawm al fasiqeen and Allah doesn't guide to the right path people who are themselves intending to be transgressing. Now the last two sections of this surah. And they are depicting, you know, a scene of the day of judgment. What is going to happen on the day of judgment? As we have read, you know, in Surah Al-Nisa, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جَيْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ The prophets which were, who were sent to different nations and tribes, they will stand up in the court of Allah and they will testify as the prosecution witnesses, as the court witnesses as we call them. But even, you know, those prophets, how they will behave, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how humble will they be? And especially in case of Jesus Christ, whom people have taken to be a part of Godhead. What will be his attitude on the day of judgment before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So these two sections, last sections of this surah are very important. Yawma yajma'u Allahu rusula. Think of the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather all the Messengers. And he will ask them, what response was given to you by your people? This is the humility. They will say, oh Allah, we don't have any definite knowledge. You are the only one who knows all the unseen. You know it. But what the response, what people said to us? You know everything. We can't add to your knowledge. You already know it. It's called Allah, Ya Isa. Um, now you know, especially Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Just recall when Allah will say to Isa, Ya Isa, O Isa ibn Maryam, son of Mary, Usku ni'mat Just recall and remember my blessings upon you. And upon your mother is ayyatuka biruhil qudus. When I strengthened you through the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, to kallamun nasafil mahdeva kahala. So that you spoke to the people in the cradle as an infant. And you spoke also. As an old man, in old age. Now this word here is very important. Kahala. According to the history, Jesus was raised or lifted from this earth to heaven. And it is accepted by all the Christians at the age of 33. This is not Kahulat. Even at the age of 40, it is Shab, according to Arabic language. Kahul, Kahl means old age. This means old age will come to Hazrat Jesus, Hazrat Masih alayhi salam. When he returns to this earth, and this is given by Hadith, he will come back, then he will marry, he will have children, and then he will die. And perhaps he will remain on earth for 40 long years. So 40 plus 33 go to make 73. Now this is old age. 
Otherwise, this word cannot be explained. Now, this is a point for those who don't believe in the second coming of Jesus. There are so many people among the Muslims who don't give any importance to ahadith. And these things, you know, which appear to them to be against scientific phenomena. How can a person come again and how can a person remain alive in the heaven for 2,000 long years? Because these things are unusual. These are miraculous. Even his birth was miraculous without father. He was given the biggest miracles, the palpable, the seen miracles, which can be seen with the eyes. The biggest miracle is Quran. But this is not something to be seen with eyes. It is to be understood through your intellect and heart. The biggest visible miracles were given to Hazrat Masih And there is a list coming. These four words appeared in Surah Al Imran also. And the relationship is, is Allam Tukal Kitab. When I taught you the book and Wal Hikmah and the wisdom. What Torah Tawar Injil? Here now wow is Wawit Tafsiri to explain. That is. The Torah and the Injil. Torah was the book, the law, and and Injil is the wisdom. There is no law in Injil. It's Allam Tukal Kitab Aval Hikmata, but Torah Tawa Injil. When I taught you the book and the wisdom, that is the Torah and the Injil. And when you used to make from clay, the likeliness of a bird. Fatan for Hufiho, Beizni, and with my command. Fatan for Hufiha, Fatakuno, Tairam Beizni. And then you breathed into it, and it used to become a, a, a bird, a real bird, with, on my command, by my command. But Tubreul Akmahawal Abrasa. And you corrected, and you healed the Born blind and the leper, bezni by my command. And when you revived the dead by my command, and when we and when I hold, held back the hands of Bani Israel from you, they were bent upon killing you, crucifying you. I caught their hands. I saved you. Is Jetahum Bil Bayanat when you came to them with clear teachings and clear miracles. Fakala Ladina Kafaru Minum in Hada Illa Sayyidu Mubin. Then those of them who disbelieved, they said, Oh, it is clear sorcery. It's magic and nothing else. Why is our Hai to Illa Hari in an Aminu Bi Babi Rasuli? And just recall, O oh Jesus, when I inspired the Havari Yin, your companions. That have faith in me and in my messenger. This is inspiration. Is ahato here? Wahi is inspiration. Wahi of the book is revelation. So these two words are separate. Inspirator. Kalu aman na washad bi anna muslimun bi anna muslimun. They said, we we believe. So you be a witness to us that we are we submit ourselves. To Allah. This Qal al now another incident. Is Qal al And just recall when these Havariyun, these companions of Jesus, asked him, Ya Isa ibn Maryam, O Isa, son of Maryam, Hal yastati o rabbuka in yunazzil alayna ma'idaka min asaba? Is your Lord capable of sending down on us a table spread with Food, a table served on it. Food. Kala taqulla. Jesus said, "Have fear of Allah. Have regard for Allah. Don't ask such ridiculous, you know, demands from Him." In kuntum mu'minin, if you are true believers, Kalu nuridu anna kula minha. They insisted. We. We, we want to eat from that table. 
which comes directly from the heaven. But that my inna kulubuna, and so that our hearts become absolutely satisfied. Now these are the words which even Hazrat Ibrahim said. So don't blame these Harariyin. And you know, we find it in Surah Al-Baqarah. Hazrat Ibrahim prayed to Allah. Arani kaifa tohil mata. Oh Allah, show me how you will revive the dead. Kala walam tuhumin. Allah said, don't you believe? Kala bala wala kille yatma inna kalbi. I do believe. But I want that my heart should be absolutely, you know, convinced of it. So the Havarin also said, Kalu nuri dunna kula minha wa tatmainna kulubuna wa nalama. And we shall come to know for sure. An qal sadaqtana. That whatever you told us, whatever you said to us was absolutely true and correct. Wa nakuna alayha min al-shahideen. And then we shall become on that witnesses. Because you know to be actually witnesses for Allah. You need a very deep conviction to become a real soldier of Allah on earth. You know, a shallow faith cannot give you the courage. You need a very deep conviction to be ready to sacrifice everything for the sake of Allah. Not easy. To read the ayah is very easy. In the last Tarah Bilal Mumin in Al Futam Wamala Bianna Laul Jannah. You can repeat it thousand times. But to be able to prove to it, equal to it, is not easy. So you need the depth of commitment, the depth of conviction. Kala Isa, now Isa, acceded to their request. Kala Isa ibn Maryam, so said Jesus, son of Mary, Allahumma, O oh God, O oh Allah, Rabbana, O oh, our sustainer, our Lord, Anzil alayna ma'ilata min as Send down upon us a table from the skies, from the heaven. Takunu lana idan li awwalina wa akhirna. So that it becomes for us a recurring, returning festival. Just as we have Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Azha. So this will become for my ummah. The remembrance of this day will become the Eid. From the people who are before and people who are coming to be later. From the first of us and the last of us. And it will become a sign from you. And feed us. You are the best feeder. Allah said, I'm going to send it down on you. But now, from man yakfur ba'd minkum. But listen, whosoever of you will disbelieve after this, after seeing such a clear sign, such a clear miracle, if now this responsibility becomes much great, after showing a clear miracle, you know, no concession is given to the people now. When you know the people of Saleh demanded a miracle, a pregnant camel should come out from this rock, if you are the messenger of Allah. A she-camel, pregnant she-camel should come down, come out from this rock, and this was given to them. But then now, if now you don't believe, then there can be no concession. All finished. So the same is the style here. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بَعْضُ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنِّي وَعَزَّبُهُ عَزَابًا لَا وَعَزَّبُهُ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ Then I will give the punishment which, to him which I will not give to any from all the worlds. This will be the most severe punishment that I will give to them. Having seen such an open miracle with their eyes. وَإِسْقَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِسَبْ لَمَرْيَمْ Just see to the style. And when Allah will say, 
او عیسا سن اف میری انت قلت للناس اتخذوا اومیا الہین من دون اللہ جن یو سے ٹو دی پیپل ٹیک می اینڈ مائی مدر آلسو ایز گاڈس بسائیڈس اللہ قال سبحانك ما يكون لي ان اقول ما ليس لي بحق now look to the humility who is he jesus رسول الله وكلمته وروح منه he will say subhana glory be to you it was not possible for me to say of which i didn't have any right in kunta qultu had i said so faqad alimta you must have known it talamu ma fi nafsi you know whatever is in my mind wala alamu ma fi nafsi i don't know what is in your mind inna ka anta alamul ghuyub you are the knower of all the unseen ma qultu lahum i didn't say to them illama amartani except the same thing which you commanded me ani abudullah rabbi wa rabbakum that worship allah my lord and your lord my sustainer and your sustainer wa kuntu alayhim shahidan ma dumtu fihim i was watching over them when i was with them kalamma tawa fatani when you recalled me kunta antar raqib alay now you were the watcher over them wanta ala kulli shay'in shahid and you are witness over everything in tazib hum is very beautiful this is the way of intercession with humility nobody can intercede with authority or arrogance man zal ladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi izni Who is that who will be able to intercede with him without his permission except with his permission Now look to the verse in tuazibhum fa innahum ibaduk If you punish them they are your brown men they are your slaves Wa in taghfir lahum and if you forgive them for inna ka anta al aziz al hakim you have all the authority you are all wise there is a plea in it a very beautiful way of requesting but not clearly saying o oh allah ifr lahum no the authority is in your hand it's up to you in tazibu fa innahu ibaduk they are your creatures you created them they are your bondsmen they have committed a mistake they committed ghuluv they raised me over and above the real position that i had they made me equal to you it's their mistake it's their sin in tawzibhum fa inna huwa ibaduk wa in taghfir lahum and if you forgive them fain laka anta al aziz al hakim nobody can ask you why you have forgiven them in the anta al aziz al hakim you have all the authority qala allah hada yawm yanfa'u sadiqin sidquhum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say oh this is the day when the truthfulness will be beneficial to the truthful lahum jannatun tajri min ta'ati al anhar khalidin fiha abada for them there are the gardens underneath which rivers are flowing and they will abode there it will be their abode forever forever razi allah anhum wa radu an allah god pleased with them and they will be pleased with allah subhanahu wa taala wa salik al fadl azim and this is the biggest success لله ملك السماوات والارض وما فيهن تو الله belongs the sovereignty and kingdom of all that is in the heavens and in the earth and whatever is in them the other expression was وما بينهما 
لِلَّهِ بُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا Now here, it's different. فَمَنْ فِيهِنْ وَمَا فِيهِنْ Whatsoever is in them, all the heavens and all the earths. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنْ قَدِيرٌ And he is powerful over everything. صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ With this we have reached the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah and now we proceed to Surah Al-An'am. And actually, in this hour, we shall have some discussion about the nature of the Bakki Surahs as a whole and how they are grouped. You know, we have been in the Badani Jannah. This was Madani Jannah, Al-Baqarah, Al-Imran, then Nisa, then Maida. It had a taste of its own. وَمِن دُونِهِمَا جَنَّتَان As we find, you know, in Surah Al-Rahman. We were, you know, walking in the Jannah of Madinah. What were the problems there? What were the issues there? The issue of Munafiqeen, the issue of Ali Kitab. Then you the commandments, the do's and don'ts, this do, do this, don't do this, this is permissible, this is haram, this is the law. All these discussions were there. But you know the conditions in the Makkah were absolutely different. No munafiqeen, no ahle kitab. There is a mention of ahle kitab in Makki surahs also, but it's a you know, sort of Zimni, secondary, not directly talking to them, addressing them. Now what are the problems here? The polytheism, the idolaters, the associators with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they didn't believe in resurrection, some of them. Most of them didn't believe in resurrection. Thirdly, they were just ignorant of anything which they might call prophethood. The Jews knew it. They believed in so many prophets. The Christians knew it. After all, they also believe in the Old Testament and whole history of the prophets. But these people at Makkah, they know who is the prophet because their history was just empty from it. So these are the main issues that are discussed in the Makki Surahs. Number one, Iman, Tawheed, Ma'ad, Resurrection, Risala, the institution of prophethood. Number two, basic moral teaching, not the legal teachings, basic morality. And criticism of the society which had decayed morally. You have become bankrupt morally. That was the condition of the society at Makkah. Then you know here, the conflict was between the idolaters and the muwahideen, people who believe in one Allah. The conflict, you know, as time passed, nearly slightly more than 12 years after the beginning of Wahi till Hijrah. And you know this conflict, the intensity of the conflict became severer and severer and severer and severer. For the first three years, they were only persecuting the person of Muhammad And that only also through words, verbal persecution. Oh, he has gone crazy. It seems some evil spirit has overtaken him. Oh, he has learnt poetry from somewhere. Oh, he gets dictation from some slave. He has some very learned, some Christian or Jew in his, you know, house, hidden there. And he gets the you know, dictation from them because he is talking so much of the pro of the prophets of Old Testament. Where from can he have the knowledge? He must have some Jew or Christian slave in his home. He has hidden them there and getting the dictation and here he comes to us and you know, 
He says it is Wahi from Allah. So all these things were being said for him. Majnoon. Sahir. Oh, he is a sorcerer, no doubt. Whatever he speaks, and he reads, you know, what he says to be the word of Allah, actually, our hearts, you know, they get influenced. So he is a sorcerer. He is a magician. So only these things were said about the Prophet, which I am labeling as the verbal persecution. And that was only for the Prophet's personality. But from the fourth year after Hijrah, fourth year after the beginning of Wai, physical persecution start. Beat them. Keep them hungry. Tie them up in the homes. Imprison them. Especially the youth who was naturally at the mercy of their elders. The elders can do anything to their offspring. And more so, you know, the slaves, they were owned by them. They were their property. They could kill a slave whenever they liked. Nobody could question them. Why did you kill him? Just as if you have a goat and you sacrifice it, nobody will go ask, why have you sacrificed this goat? Because I own it, I can sacrifice it any time I like. And this, this you know, slave is also my property. I can do whatever I like. So this conflict, you know, was progressing and progressing and progressing. And the second point that I want to make clear, that there are, as I told you, there are seven groups of Makki and Madani Surahs in the Quran. But the first group is very peculiar. The Makki Surah was only Surah Al-Fatiha, a very small Surah, seven ayat. Although it's very profound, it's equal to the whole of Quran, Ummul Quran. But here we find four longest Surahs of the Quran, Madanis. Bakara, al Imran, Nisa, Maida. Now, what does it mean? That actually there are only six groups of Makki Surahs in the Quran. If you just keep away Surah Al Fatiha, it's a preface to the whole of the Quran, not to the first group only. About these six groups, first group is this, comprising of two Surahs, a pair of Surahs, that is Al Anam Al Araf. Then we shall have a pair of Madani Surahs, Al-Fal and Tawbah. Then 14 Makki Surahs. Surah Yunus, Surah Hud, Surah Yusuf, Surah Rad. You just listened today, those of you who were present in the Taravi. Surah Yusuf and Surah Rad. Then you know Surah Ibrahim, Surah Hijr, Surah Nahl, Surah Bani Israel, Surah Al-Kahf, Surah Maryam, Surah Taha, Ambiya. Hajj, 14 surahs, and then a single surah, Madani, and that is Surah Nur. So we have six groups. The general distribution of these groups is, if you divide the 12 years into three parts, first four years, middle four years, last four years. The surahs which were revealed during the first four years are in the last two groups. The surahs which are included in the middle two groups, they were revealed in the middle four years. And these surahs which are in the first two groups of the Makki surahs, they were generally revealed in the last four years. So it's the reverse order. The reverse order of compilation in that respect also that the first Madani surahs we have read, although they were revealed after Hijra. And reverse order in this also, in this aspect also, that among the Makki surahs, which were the latest in Revelation, appear in this book in Musaf, first of all. Then the middle. And then those surahs which were revealed in the very beginning. Especially this pair, you know, about Surah Al-Anam, let it be known, that this was revealed in the last year before Hijrah. And number two, there is a hadith from Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, which says that this was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one piece at one time. I've been telling you that the period of the revelation of Surah Al-Baqarah, about two years, just beginning just after migration, 
hijrah till the battle of Badr. In the same way, the period of revelation of Surah Al-Ma'idah, six, seventh years. Some of the ayat are much later, which are included in it. But this Surah Al-An'am, it was revealed as one piece, one khutbah, one sermon, one discourse, whole attendance. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور All praise be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى This note After Surah Al-Fatiha we are again beginning a surah with Alhamdulillah And this is the seventh part Is it? And you will find again in the fifteenth part سورة الكهف الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا Then again in the 22nd سورة الفاتر سورة السبع الحمد لله الحمد لله At regular intervals in the Quran the surahs are starting with الحمد لله بالتحميد الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض All praise be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى who created the heavens and the earth. وَجَعَلَ الظُّلُمَاتِ وَالنُّورِ Note the change of the word. And he made light and darkness. Because for darkness, خَلْق is not an appropriate word. Darkness is no positive existence. It's a negative concept. There is no light. It's darkness. So خَلْق, you know, this cannot be applicable. وَخَلَقَ الظُّلُمَاتِ وَالنُّورِ It was not said. وَجَعَلَ الظُّلُمَاتِ وَالنُّورِ And he made the darknesses, again, note, darknesses in plural, وَالنُّورِ Light as a singular. سُمَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ يَعْدِلُونَ But, those who disbelieve, they are associating partners, equals to Allah. Adil here means to make equal, because Adil means equity. To assigning someone to be equal to Allah, that word is used in this form also. Because actually, now this is Tawheed. So the first ayah is discussing Tawheed and condemning shirk. ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون هو الذي خلقكم من طين ثم قضى أجلا. It is He who created you from clay, and then He decreed and fixed a term, a time. وأجل مسمى إنده. And there is another fixed term and time which is with Him. ثم أنتم تمترون. But you are doubting about it. What does it mean? Two ajals. One ajal we know. Each individual has a fixed time of death. And nobody denies it. Do you know any person who can deny death? So sure of it. Although we just keep it out of our mind. Don't want to think about it. But we know it. It has to come sooner or later. In the same way, there is another time fixed for this whole world. About that you are doubting. You see this time. These are two things. Each individual has an ajal. And you all believe in it. And this whole world has an ajal. You don't want to believe it. How come? So this is the simple logic of Qur'an. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تِينٍ ثُمَّ قَضَى عَجَلًا وَعَجَلٌ مُصَبَّنْ إِنْدَهُ ثُمَّ أَنْدُمْ تَنْتَرُونَ And this is, you know, إِنْدَهُ is very important. It is with him. He only knows. إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِنْدَهُ إِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ Nobody knows about this, you know, عَجَلٌ of this world when it will come. 
the doomsday, when it will come, nobody knows. Even the Prophet in that hadith of Jibreel, he said, nobody knows it except Allah. Now, in the first ayah there was Tawheed, in the second ayah it is resurrection and doomsday. And he is the God in the heavens as well as on earth. You tend to believe the one who is in heaven. You don't want to believe in the one who is in this world. What does it mean? If you believe that he is the Lord of the heavens as well as the Lord of this world, you must establish his kingdom here. Kingdom of heaven on earth. But we have separated the two. My Lord, your Lord. And that Lord has nothing to do with this world. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You are the same God. You are the same Allah. He is the same Allah. His command, you know, is being executed in the skies. Thy will be done as it is in earth, in the heavens. Ya sirrakum wa jahrakum. He knows whatever you hide and whatever you pronounce openly. Ya lamu ma He knows what you are earning. And I told you that this word cusp in Quran appears good deeds or bad deeds. And to him and to these people, whichever sign of Allah comes, there doesn't come to them any sign of Allah, but they are turning away. They turn their faces up, away. They are not going to accept. فَقَدْ كَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاهُمْ Now this قَدْ كَذَّبُوا, note it. In Arabic when with the past tense, mazi, fi'lul mazi, if it is preceded by قَدْ, it means present perfect tense. It has happened. Something which has already happened. فَقَدْ كَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاهُمْ They have refuted, rejected the truth which has come to them. Why it is being said in the twelfth year after the beginning of Wahi? Twelve long years had passed. Muhammad sallallahu was conveying to them the message, despite all the persecution, verbal or physical. He continued and continued and continued. A small city, maybe less than Flushing. Flushing might be a very big town. I don't know. A few hundred families living in Makkah, that's all. And twelve long years, preaching day and night. Those who have not up till now accepted it, it means they have rejected. That is why in the very first section of Surah Al-Baqarah you find, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَلَاهُنْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنزَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْذِرُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ خَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَفْسَارِهِمْ غِشَابًا Those who have rejected it, now there is no use if you go on preaching and preaching to them. They are not going to believe. Allah has put on their, a seal on their hearts. You will find the same subject coming in this surah also. Because you know, these surahs, if it is correct that this was revealed in the last year before Hijrah, the first surah after Hijrah is Surah Al-Baqarah. So the two are joined together. Although in the Musaf, you know, in this, we find them very much separate. فَقَدْ كَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاءُوا فَصَوْ فَيَاتِيهِمْ أَمْبَاوْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَعْتِهُونَ So very soon the news of those things will come to them about whom they were mocking. They were mocking. What will happen? Oh, you are threatening us with some dire consequences that the punishment of Allah will come. Oh, no. So all these things will come to them. They will see it. Seventy of them will be lying dead in the battle of Badr. It's not very far off. It's just approaching. 
ابو جال لائنگ ڈیڈ امیہ ابن خلف لائنگ ڈیڈ سیونٹی آف تو سون دی نیوز آف دوز تھنگز ویل کم تو دیم ایز ایکچول ایونٹس اباؤٹ ویچ دی ہیڈ بین موکنگ علم یراؤ کا محلکنا من قبل ہی من قرن مکناہم فی الارض مالا ابن مکن لکم have they not considered it how many generations we destroyed before them they know the history of Ad and Samud these nations were at some time living in the Arabian Peninsula the nation of Ad the nation of Hud in the southern part which is the worst type of desert today and very recently you know their city Shaddad's capital has been discovered. It is under the desert. And you know Samud, to whom Saleh was sent. He lived, you know, in the northwestern region of the Arabian Peninsula. So these people knew their, their nations, that there was such a nation, it was destroyed. How many generations, how many nations we destroyed? and eliminated. مَكَّنَّاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَا لَمْ نُمَكِّنْ لَكُمْ We established them in the land as much we have not established you. The hold of Aad was very great. A very big culture, very big civilization. In the same way, in the days of Samud, they were very powerful. Oh, you Quraysh of Bakka, you are not so powerful. You are only enjoying some privileges. Because you are the custodians of Kaaba. The ilaf e Qurayshin, ilaf e him ve elat ash-shitai wa saif. Fal yabudu rabba haad al-bayt illa di atama hum min joim ba amana min khauf. Not due to your own strength. You are not on your own feet. But qawm e Aad and qawm e Sumud, they were very great people. Wa sallna sama alayhim midrara. And we poured water from heavens on them. Like torrents. Rains coming abundantly. وَجَعَلْنَا الْأَنْهَارَ تَلْرِيمِ تَعَاتِهِمْ And we made rivers flowing underneath them. فَاهْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ But then we destroyed them, finished with them, eliminated them due to their sins. وَانْشَانَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ قَرْنًا آخَرِينَ And then we raised after them another generation. فَلَوْ نَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ كِتَابًا فِي قِرْتَاسٍ فَلَمَسُوهُ بِعَدِيهِمْ And had we sent down on them a book in parchment, and they would have touched it with their hands, لَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سَيْرٌ مُبِينٌ Then these unbelievers would have said, Oh, it is magic, it is sorcery. And the background of this ayah, and you know the passages, passage which we shall read in the next hour, it's very important. You know, so to say, please, don't take it literally. At that time, the Prophet ﷺ was as if he was being crushed between the two stones of a grinder. I'm using very strong words. What's the meaning? On the one hand, the, the chiefs of Quraysh, they were demanding from him a visible miracle. Oh, Muhammad, if you say you are a messenger of Allah, show us the miracles that were given to the former messengers. And this sounded very logical. Isn't it so? If you say you are a messenger of Allah, show us a miracle. And the miracle which we can see with our eyes. If to Samud that miracle was given, that was their demand, A pregnant sea camel came out from the rock. Well, they were demanding such a miracle from him also. And what was the effect on the masses, on the common people? Oh, yes, yes they are very correct. They are making a just demand from him. Well, he is claiming to be the messenger of Allah. So he must show the miracle. This is on one side. And on the other hand, Allah said, No, nothing doing. I am not going to show them any such miracle. You shall read it. 
you can very well, very well appreciate to what sort of a complicated position in which he was caught and what were the feelings of the Prophet and what were the feelings of the companions of the Prophet and what were the feelings of the common people and what were the feelings of the chieftains that we shall inshallah read in the next passage. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.